that patrol. the dulcet tones of Captain Kirk Posell, the public address announcer tonight. He also uh, has done the Minnesota ladies volleyball team for quite some time at the Joel Maturi Sports Center. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jerry Otto. Very happy to be here with SEC Television as we are going to have Suburban East Conference soccer for you. This is the second game for each team. Both teams are 1-0 to start off the conference season, as uh, you'll see here in a second, as uh, Eastridge currently undefeated. Uh, they are an uh, excellent team. They have been, uh, especially last year as well. Uh, Roseville has won their last two. They beat Moundsview 4-1 and defending state champion Wyzetta 2-1. Then you've got Stillwater, who currently is number one in the state of Minnesota at 6-0-2. The White Bear Lake Bears uh, had a rain out and then another cancellation, but they are 2-1-1 one one with a win over the Creighton Raiders, 1-0, and then also over the Fridley Tigers by the same score. Beautiful night here at White Bear Stadium, 80 degrees. Uh, wind coming in from the south, so that'll the uh, factors certainly during the game as uh, Roseville in their road white and black. They're starting on the right side of your screen. There you see Thin Win. He's being looked at by numerous D3 uh, colleges and you can see why. He is Roseville's leading scorer, four goals on the year. Just missed a hat trick against the Moundsview Mustangs and also scored a big, scored a big goal in that win over the YZ Trojans. Roseville is uh, missing their top goaltender tonight, Louis Ramos. Uh, he was injured in that game against Wyzetta, so Nick Rognes, uh Jr. will be starting for the Raiders tonight. For White Bear, they are starting uh, quite a mix of seniors, juniors, a sophomore, and a freshman. That's Nick O'Brien. He's a defender for the Bears. Starting goaltender for White Bear tonight is Jeremy Beckler. quickly into the Roseville zone. That's scooped up by Ragnus as a White Bear player uh, really thought he had gotten fouled as uh, he's limping back the other way. That is Nure Kadir. White Bear regaining control. That's Dan Vargas along the near sideline. Good centering pass and that one goes just over the upright and over the football crossbar. So it'll be a goal kick for Roseville. And you see Nure Kadir, one of the Senior leaders for White Bear this year. The uh, co-captains are Grant Miller and Carter Ellers. This one kicked along the near sideline. Nice job tracking it down by Ellers. Centering kick will be scooped up by Rodness and he'll toss it out of harm's way as uh, they're putting on pressure again was Kadir. Long kick out past midfield after it for Roseville is May Paul Wah. He's also had a great start to the season. That is knocked out of bounds off of Paul Morris. Paulie Jr. on this year's Bears team. Last season, White Bear was seven, eight, and three, one, five, and two in the Suburban East, but uh, they were highly ranked in the QRF 
uh, 26, which shows you uh, strength of schedule wise. White Bear had one of the stronger ones in the Metro. In uh, the section playoffs, they were the five seed, one at North St. Paul, three to one, and then lost to a very good Stillwater team, one nothing in the semis. Good centering kick, shot put on there by Yusuf Abdallah. He has a goal and an assist on the year, but that was blocked smartly by the Bear defense. And here comes Carter Ellers. He tries to get by win nine. Looking for a centering kick, and that goes between two Bears. On the far side, there's Vargas again. And stolen away by the Raider defense. Back out to midfield, played there by Spencer Millard, a senior defender. Roseville regains control, nice lead pass as Maypaw Wah stays on side, keeps it in bounds. And again, a nice play there by Paul Morris to slow things down a bit. Both these teams started out the season on August 23rd. White Bear had a 1-1 draw at Bloomington Kennedy. And uh, as we mentioned, beat Fridley on the 25th. Uh, had a game against North St. Paul that was rained out and lost to an excellent Matamidi team. I think they're in Class A. Uh, for nothing before beating uh, Creighton to get uh, their first win on the conference season. There are four teams at 1-0, East Ridge, Roseville, Stillwater, and White Bear. And as, uh, we have a call here by the official. I think a uh, White Bear player might uh, have a cut or something like that to where he needs to get that looked at. That's Justin Woosler. He is a sophomore. Uh, Coach Carl Gendy is kind of wondering what the case is, but I think uh, the referee will explain it. So we'll need a quick substitution here as Roseville is going to have a throw in. Rowan goes off of Wa and out of bounds. Played there again by Paul Morris. He's been a magnet for the soccer ball here so far. So we're just underway, first half action here at White Bear. Woodbury is uh, the lone team that has not played a conference game as of yet. And then the four teams with 0-1-1 records are Creighton, Forest Lake, Moundsview, and Park. Well, unfortunately, I don't have numbers for the JV players. There's a 21 for the Bears. We'll attempt to find out who that is. Cleared out briefly by Roosevelt's Jorge Radia, one of the three captains for the Raiders. Good pressure put on by the Bears, and Waldemarian will send that forward. Taking it there is Maypaw Wah. Uh, last year, he had five goals and four assists. He's the leading returning scorer for Roseville. They had one of the better players in the state in Jonas Kozlowskis. He had 16 goals, averaging one a game and seven assists. But he was injured in the last regular season game against Eastridge, and that really sunk. Roseville's playoff chances as they were the number one seed. Good stop there by the Bears, Spencer Millard again. And a little lead pass for co-captain Grant Miller. The wind is kind of indifferent. <laughs> if you can see uh, far flank at midfield. It was blowing uh, pretty drastically from right to left, but uh, it switched. Lead pass intercepted by Aran Cope, and he'll make the stop. Aran, Radia, and Thin Win are the captains for this year's Raider team. Aran is only a junior. Jorge and uh, Thin are seniors. 
Down in the White Bear defensive zone, stolen away by the Bears. And along the far sideline, that's played by Vargas. Roseville's coach now, I think, for six or seven years, maybe even eight. Papagos, Papagapados. He uh, prefers to be called AP because it's a lot easier to say. And that works. Coming down quickly in the near side is Gavin Rogers for the Bears. And that will go out of bounds. Jump on, jump on. Push up, push up. And we'll have another goal kick for hey. Roseville. Goal kick, Roseville. As you can tell with the wind, uh, it's playing a little havoc here with the audio. Nice centering kick and unable to get to it was Gavin Rogers. White Bear will throw it in. And stolen away by the Raiders. Is there an echo in here? Yosef Abdallah takes it for Roseville and will send it forward. That's intercepted by Thomas Coyne. Now along the near sideline, Coyne plays it again. And this will be a throw in for the Bears. Both these teams surprisingly are 2-0 and on the football season. Again, uh, they no longer go by conferences in Minnesota football. They go by districts. Of course, Roseville and White Bear are both in the Metro East. We'll get to that in a little while. That's sent over on a smart pass by co-captain Miller. That'll go out of bounds as a little too far for Thomas Coyne. Uh, White Bear had a very nice win at uh, Centennial. It was a good team. They beat Totino last week, 28-27. Uh, and then this past Friday beat uh, Osseo 24-14. That's their two uh, non-Metro East games. They'll play everybody else in the district after that. And they have a big matchup against the Raiders uh, the last Friday in September here at White Bear Stadium. Good spin move there put on by Abdallah. And this will be a Roseville throw in again. As we have about nine minutes gone in the first half. After this, in the second half of the doubleheader, will be the girls as White Bear currently number five in the state at five and two on the season. Good lead kick there, taken in by Thin Win, but uh, White Bear really clogging things up in the middle in front of the net, and they're able to clear it out. Good hustle there by Nure Kadir. Out of bounds, it will be a Roseville throw in again. Lead kick, uh, Roseville wanted a handball, didn't get it. Ball to Merriam. Now loose at midfield. Taking it there again is Carter Ellers. This goes all the way down back for Aran Koo. And he'll clear it out of harm's way. Taking it there is Daniel Vargas again. 10 minutes gone, nobody with a really good shot to speak of, although, well, I shouldn't say that. Here's a chance quickly coming down, but they're gonna say a foul on Roseville's uh, Maypa Wa. Actually, uh, New Ray Kadir had a very good chance, but it went over Free both crossbars. Headed back the other way smartly by Radia. Now trying to take it there is Josh Yang for Roseville. Back 
Back to midfield, played again by Daniel Vargas. He's been around the ball an awful lot. He's one of two starting sophomores for the Bears, along with Justin Whistler. And uh, he had to leave the field. I assume it was a cut or something maybe blood related. I'm sure he'll be back on sooner rather than later. Grant Miller after it there for the Bears. Nice job by Wynn, sending it forward, and a nice diving stop by Beckler. I'll tell you, he's one of the bigger goalies I have seen over the past few years, but made a really nice athletic play on that one. Millard will send it forward. Actually, Beckler is the only goalie listed. I think uh, Millard might be the backup, if it would ever come down to that. Good centering kick, shot put on, and that was deflected. Good attempt there by Abdallah. Now right in front of the net. Another shot, and that goes just off of Beckler and off the near post. Walter Merriam with the best scoring chance of the day. That is kicked out of bounds, and it'll be a goal kick for White Bear. Mm. Nice job by Beckler just to get enough of it to steer it. Off of the near post. As uh, Victor Vang is going to get a breather. We'll take another look at it here. Yeah, here we go. After he uh, takes it here, there's Walter Merriam's shot and uh, went just off the hands of Beckler and he got enough to where it uh, wasn't one nothing Raiders. Ah uh, Lee is uh, checked in for Roseville, the junior midfielder. He had a big goal in the 4-1 to victory over Moundsview. It was 1-1 at halftime. Nice move there by Miller again. Over to Ellers, and that'll be scooped up by Nick Rodness. Roseville with uh, Sophomore and junior goaltenders. The junior is starting tonight. Uh, Louis Ramos had played most of the previous games, but again, uh, was injured in that big win over the Trojans. Roseville's uh, goaltender the past two seasons was excellent, Cody Barrett. He's now playing at the University of St. Thomas and also an all-conference player for the Raiders, Omar Anwar. He's at McAllister. Nice steal there by Thomas Coyne, the junior. And he'll lead the rush. Good chance there along the side, but unable to keep it in bounds was Gavin Rogers. Another Suburban East action tonight. Uh, Stillwater is at Creighton. That should be a relatively easy win for the Ponies. Uh, Woodbury at Eastridge, a couple of crosstown rivals there. And then Moundsview at Forest Lake. Uh, White Bear's next game will be on the 13th at Forest Lake. And then they host a very strong Duluth East team on the 15th. Duluth East currently third in the state at 6-0-1. Almost 15 minutes gone here in a scoreless first half. With only having 15 regular season games, you just play everybody in the conference once. So over half your schedule is in the Suburban East. Last year, uh, Roseville hosted White Bear on September 12th, uh, 364 days uh, ago, and uh, beat the Bears 4-1. It was 2-0 at halftime. Uh, Roseville had three different, four different goal scorers, Keslauskas, Walda Miriam, who's playing today, and the two other graduates, Ann Warren Saw, too. And then Lauren Altman, uh, ironically, he actually had the only goal against the Raiders, both in 2016 and 2017. But uh, he graduated here this summer. Long pass, Rockness will kick it away from a couple of Bears. Good tackle there by Ali. Back at midfield, played there. 
and we're going to have a foul on Roseville as again uh, New Ray Kadir knocked to the turf. Looks like he's all right. So now they're going to call over uh, Captain Miller. That is clobbered over the head of the waiting Ellers and back out to Millard over there by the White Bear bench. And it will be a bear throwing. Also likely to see playing time for Roseville might be uh, Tristan Tao and uh, Nehemiah Waldemarium. Nehemiah is a sophomore, Noah is a senior. Cleared out the other way again. Uh, White Bears defenders have done a great job here so far. Roseville after tonight will uh, travel to Stillwater. That'll be a very tough one. And then uh, they're at Minnetonka on the 15th. Minnetonka also uh, very highly ranked in the state and they're undefeated at 5-0-3. The Skippers are number four, right behind the Greyhounds. The uh, city schools are really off to a good start. The Minneapolis Washburn Millers, number two in the state, undefeated. And then the St. Paul Central Minutemen having a great year, 4-0-1. They tied Stillwater, and they're number eight in the state. I think we're going to have a handball on White Bear as we're near the midway point of the first half. High in the air. It's almost like a punt. So that bounces off the track by Kadir. Roseville with the throw in. Good centering kick, and again, nice job by Beckler to beat a Thin Win to the ball. I think Beckler might also play basketball. Both uh, Roseville and White Bear girls basketball teams have had a very strong history. Good shot inside the far post, and the first goal of the game will go to Yusuf Abdallah, his second one on the season. Abdallah able to sneak in behind the defense. And we'll take a look here at the replay. Score by number five, Yusef Abdallah. Abdallah scoring in the 20th minute play. Nice spin move to get around the defender. And a little fake. And able to get by Paul Morris and Beckler for the first goal of the night. Roseville strikes first. This looks like uh, win nigh for Roseville is going to be uh, looked at by the trainer. Hopefully he's all right. Coming down quickly is Maypaw Wa. Good pass for Walden Merriam. By the legs of Beckler. And just like that, two goals, 35 seconds apart. And Walden Merriam makes it 2-0. 
take another look here. Raiders right. goal, score by number seven, Noah Oldmerian. Really nice uh, set up there by the Nate Paul Long. For the Raider. Law now has three, uh, excuse me, a goal and an assist on the year. That is Walden Merriam's first goal to go along with four helpers. Quickly, it's 2 nothing at the midway point. Hustling after it for the Bears is Gavin Rogers. Rogers along the goal line, double teamed. Back out for Kadir. There is Beckler as he's going to clear it out all the way to midfield. He's going to have to catch up a little bit with the uh, actual clock. Nice job by uh, Anthony and Arlen and company to uh, spot that in the truck. Ah, Seth, thank you very much. This will go out of bounds, and another throw in for the Bears. It's going to be Nick O'Brien. Stolen away by Roseville. Noah Waldemarian, boy, he's had a great week. Again, really played well against uh, Moundsview, and then had a big assist in the goal, in the win against Wyzetta. Quickly back down for Roseville, getting uh, knocked over there was Yusuf Abdallah as uh, Beckler collided with Abdallah. And I think we might have a penalty kick here. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be Jorge Radia. Penalty kick Raider. <laughs> Top corner and a beauty as again getting taken down in the box was uh, Yusuf Abdallah. So surprisingly, this game was scoreless up until right near the midway point. And in the last minute uh, before the 20 minute mark, Roseville scored twice in 35 seconds and now has added a penalty kick goal to go up 3 0. Again, White Bears' last contest was last Thursday when they beat uh, the Creighton Raiders here 1 0. Roseville's last game was on Saturday when they beat Wyzetta. That one, Finn Wynn and May Pawa uh, each had goals in the contest. It was 2 0 Roseville at the half. Throw in for Roseville. This will be Radia. The uh, activities director was in the Mountain View District for a long time. Great centering pass. And what a shot by Finn Wynn as he makes it 4 0. Again, uh, Walden Merriam will get the assist on that one. Raiders goal, scored by number 10, Win Finn. Finn scoring in the 24th minute of play for the Raider. Valdemarium well, now with a goal and an assist as uh, there you see a really nice give and go. Win to Valdemarium, back to win. Really not much the uh, Bear defense could do about it. 
Couple substitutions as Morris and Vargas will get a breather. Uh, Micah Anderson looks like is in the game for the Bears. Not sure if it's any relation to the quarterback. That one uh, sent forward as after it there for Roseville was uh, Say Blue. Nice move there by Tom Cohen. Ali still out there for the Raiders. He was their first substitution. Now Cooper Anderson has been the starting quarterback for the Bears. His father, Will, was an excellent athlete. I think he played hockey for the Gophers. Nice chip pass as that connects well, with Abdallah briefly. Now he tries to get by the defender, Max Lakes. Uh, Lakes also checking in, he's a senior. Lee looking to center, he does, but it's into the waiting arms of Beckler. So Roseville with three goals, less than four minutes apart, Abdallah, Waldemarium, Radia and Wynn, four different goal scorers for Roseville. And we're gonna have a substitution. Yes, Josh Yang will get a breather. And Nehemiah Waldemarium will check in. And the sophomore has two assists on the season. And Noah now has a goal and five helpers. A little collision there. I think that was a good no call. The Bears coming back the other way. Lead pass for Micah Anderson. Couldn't quite get to it. Under 15 minutes left here in the first. And we were attempting to uh, get this game on uh, CTV Sports. Hopefully that worked out. Great. Yeah, yeah, good friend Dale Irving was uh, working that out with Anthony and company. It's a big volleyball match tonight, uh, tomorrow night, excuse me, as North St. Paul is 7 and 0 on the season. Last year, they were 23 and four. Just a phenomenal year. Uh, Roseville, after making it to state five years in a row, had a difficult 2017. But uh, they are currently three and zero, and went to Hopkins and beat the number eight team in the state, the Royals, last week in four sets. So we're very much looking forward to that one. That's headed forward, and it'll still be white bear ball. That's uh, Joe Wallach as he's in the game for the first time. Free kick, White Bear Lake. So this will be co-captain Grant Miller. That's a beauty, but will be headed uh, out of the box by Ron Cope. There's Waldemarium, lead kick intended for Abdallah. Abdallah by the defender, coming in, puts a shot on, beautiful save by Beckler as he knocks it over the crossbar. Boy, he has had to really work hard these past 10 plus minutes. And it'll be a corner kick for the Raiders. And we'll get a good replay. As again, hustling down was uh, Lakes and beautiful save once more. It looks as though uh, Nehemiah Waldemarium is going to take the corner on this one. He just gets it to Wa. Wa by the defender. Still has it, back to Nehemiah, shot put on into the waiting arms of Beckler. Roseville 
has won their last two. They're two and three on the year. They lost to uh, the Centennial Cougars, one nil at Egan, two to one. And at Eastview, losing to the Lightning, four to two, uh, before the two big wins over Moundsview and Wyzetta. Uh, poor Moundsview girls in their first four contests, they only scored one goal. Oof. This is turning into a bit of a football game as uh, we had some nasty collisions there. Uh, down on the turf is Tom Breen. Hopefully he's all right. And then uh, we had another one with Wallach and it looked like uh, maybe Valenti. We'll take a look here at the upcoming schedule here on SCC Cable. Oh, excuse me, uh, this is uh, the soccer schedule. No problem. Uh, again, at Stillwater, number one in the state, at Minnetonka, number four in the state. So that winning streak uh, is probably going to get snapped uh, in one of those games. Then uh, home to Park, we might be covering that one. Otherwise, I think we're going to switch to the East Ridge games. Those should be uh, excellent. Then uh, home to Creighton. Three road games against St. Anthony, Forest Lake, and Woodbury. Uh, and that stretch last year, Roseville won seven in a row. They beat Forest Lake and Woodbury each four, four nothing in uh, two shutouts. And then also beat uh, St. Anthony five to one. Wouldn't surprise me if Brian Brady might do the uh, St. Anthony games. And here comes the White Bear Bears upcoming schedule again. <laughs> Both teams have a really tough next opponent for Roseville, the Stillwater Ponies, for White Bear, the number three team in the state, the Duluth East Greyhounds. Uh, then at Woodbury again, their first conference game is tonight as uh, they take on Moundsview. That's one they should have a good shot at. And home to Eastridge and the Mustangs before closing up on the road at Stillwater and at Park. Thankfully it looks like uh, Thomas Breen's going to be okay as the trainer's looking over his uh, leg there. The team's taking a little bit of a water break. Again, it's 80 degrees, but when the heat radiates off the turf, usually it's another five to 10 degrees hotter. I think White Bear started out with a 3-4-3 setup, but again, uh, teams rarely stick to a, a rigid offensive or defensive setup anymore. It's a lot more amoeba-like and fluid, high in the air, headed down to the turf. Nice job there by White Bear's Tom Coyne. And instead, uh, Roseville will send it forward. Trying to get by the defender is Maypaw Wa. Nice move into the middle, shot put on, and scooping it up smartly is Beckler. There's a few friends of mine at White Bear that do some announcing. Of course, Kirk Passell doing it right now. Uh, but also uh, Steve Engstrand, he does the public address announcing for the uh, basketball games. He's also an EMT in White Bear. Just. Uh, went to Canton for the Pro Football Hall of Fame ceremonies as getting knocked to the turf unceremoniously was Grant Bring Miller. Him, <laughs> Didn't really want to help up by uh, the assaulting Roseville player. Low booming kick is sent back out by Roseville. 30 minutes gone here in the first half. Nick, Nick, right here, Nick. 
So again, Nick Ragnus, he hasn't been tested much since uh, the very start of the game when Nure Kadir had a really good scoring chance. And he has the uh, ball again. Quickly back the other way by Armando Valente. Fernando is a junior, excuse me, a sophomore. Actually, Fernando and Armando are both sophomores. At halftime, uh, we'll have an interview with Aaron Forsyth. This was from uh, Hold the Phone. He is the activities director at Mata Medi. Uh, Roseville's uh, activities director the past six years was former Mata Medi athletic director, Jeff Whistler, and he is retired. Roseville has a new athletic director, Reed Hornung. I came back into the state, he grew up here. He was out in Washington. Uh, also had a very good run with the Louisville and Utah State football programs. That goes off of Coyne and out of bounds. It'll be a Roseville throw in. White Bears Activities Director Brian Pelliquin, he also came over from the Moundsview District. Let me see if I can remember the chain of events. Bob Madison, who had been the longtime athletic director there, he took a front office job with the high school league. So then Jim Galvin, the legendary uh, football coach, of course his father was an uh, athletic director and the uh, best ba basketball coach that White Bear ever had when they had back-to-back uh, -back undefeated state championship seasons in the early 80s. Uh, Jim decided to take the activities director's job. So then Aaron Moberg, who was the Moundsview girls soccer coach, took the football job. That is out of bounds off of the Bears. Radia, one of the tri-captains, will inbound it at seven and a half minutes. Well, you could certainly do a lot worse than being the activities director at Matamide. They are pretty much strong across the board in uh, soccer, hockey, especially football. Yes, you are right. Uh, Matamide was the state champion, I think, in either 3A or 2A. Because I know Stillwater won the uh, the larger school uh, class. They had two of the best starting pitchers in the state of Minnesota. They're both going to Oregon State in the near future. And of course, they just won the NCAA baseball title down in Omaha. They knocked off, off the Gophers in the round of 16. And the Gophers had an excellent season. Their closer, one of the best ones in the uh, nation, was a freshman from Woodbury, Max Meyer. Sean Jelly is at Kentucky, and he was the SEC Freshman of the Year. Uh, I remember him more from basketball, as uh, Roseville beat the Zephyrs in the uh, section final. I want to say this was four or five years ago. Yeah, it's not surprising that he would be drafted. Uh, I think it's after your junior year. He's uh, about as tall as Randy Johnson. He's a good 6'10", 6 6'11". 6 and uh, the SEC baseball is about as tough as it gets. And he's been excellent for the Wildcats. Five and a half left to go here in the half. Walter I'm taking it there briefly for Roseville. And they'll get it back. Try to give and go there, but that was intercepted. There for the Bears is Micah Anderson again. Roosevelt quickly coming down the far side, and that was cleared out on a smart play by the Bear defense. And I think we're going to have offsides. I 
Actually, it's going to be a free kick. Free kick, White Bear Lake. Last year in football uh, at Roseville High School. Roseville ended up beating the Bears 41 to six, which uh, was a bit surprising. I think uh, the Bears will be out for some revenge here in uh, about two and a half weeks at White Bear. Yeah, I had uh, mentioned that earlier. I, I had forgotten that uh, it was their first game in 19 uh, contests as they uh, came back to beat the Cougars 28-27. And then uh, White Bear beat uh, the Osseo Orioles who won the state title, I wanna say three or four years ago, 24 to 14. Roseville beat Anoka 22-7, and then the Woodbury Royals 27-7. Ooh, take down there. And getting back up quickly was Micah Anderson. He's all right. Free kick, White Bear Lake. 3.15 left in the half. Good curling kick, headed up in the air, but unable to get it on net was Millard. And so this will be another goal kick for Roseville. Again, Roseville's usual starting goalie out tonight with an injury suffered against the defending state champion Wyzetta Trojans. Nick Ragnus has done just fine in his place so far. Nice spin move there by Ali. This will go out of bounds and throw in coming for Yusuf Abdallah. He scored the uh, first goal of the evening back uh, almost 20 minutes ago, at least uh, clockwise. On the far sideline, that's sent forward. There's uh, Nure Kadir, he was around the ball an awful lot the first 10 minutes or so. Under two minutes left in the half. Nice side pass over to near the far sideline. Only give and go is taking it there as Ali again. Say blue there in midfield. Taking it there is Armando Valenti. Nice steal there by Roseville's Say blue and scooping that one up again will be Beckler. One minute left in the half. And that will go just out of bounds off of Rose White Bear, excuse me. Roseville regaining control. That was Armando Valenti. And on the far side, I believe that's Ryan Notestad. I think there's a Notestad on the girls Roseville team. Good centering kick, but this will go by everybody. And White Bear will knock it out of bounds, and that will do it. For the first half, scoreless in the first 19 minutes, Roseville exploded for four in a row in under four minutes to make it 4-0 at halftime. We'll take a break. This is SEC Sports coverage of Suburban East Soccer, and now we'll have an interview with Matamidi Athletic Director Aaron Forsyth.
very much, gentlemen. We're very delighted to be here, and it's not every day that we get a new athletic director coming in for an interview. We're here with Mr. Aaron Forsyth, the new athletic director for Montemita High School Sports. Aaron, thank you for joining us here. Yeah, thank you for having me. What we'll do to start out with, we have a few quick rapid-fire questions for you, just to get to know you okay. a little bit. First question we'll start out with is, if you could go anywhere in the summer, where would you go? Um... Put me on a lake in Minnesota anywhere with uh, friends and family, and I'm going to have fun. Let's talk about your favorite sport. Uh, that's a tough one. Depends where I'm at um, and uh, who's playing. Uh, me personally right now, I'm, uh, my vice would be golf. Uh, I spend as much time on the course as I can in my free time uh, and really enjoy it. We're right in the heart of fair territory here. Favorite state fair food? Oh, uh, Sweet Martha's Cookies uh, is a must, and I am always making sure I'm getting a pork chop on a stick when I'm there. Favorite sports memory as a player? As a player. That's a really tough one. Um, gosh, uh, in NCAA tournament uh, in college for hockey. Great memory. And how about as a coach? Uh, as a coach, um, uh, Suburban East Conference title 2010 for boys hockey. And if there's one thing that you could go back and do again, what was it? What would that thing be? Uh, I would have played more sports in high school. So what we'll do now is we'll talk a little bit about your career and how you got to come here to join us in Montemidae. Take us through that path. How did you end up here? Um, so going back from the start in, in my career, I started out at uh, Force Lake, taught social studies there for seven years, uh, was the head boys hockey coach, um, coached JV girls golf, uh, and coached in the weight room in the falls. Enjoyed my time there. Um, spent four years as an activities director, and this past summer took the job at Mount Amida High School. Uh, it's been a great transition. The community's been very welcoming. Um, we're excited to uh, get our family involved in Mount Amida schools and uh, looking forward to the future there. So speaking of Matamidi schools, what was it that led you to make the decision to come aboard to Matamidi? You know, um, it was it was about 12 years at Forest Lake and uh, I really enjoyed my time there. Great community, um, good schools and there was, it was just, it was time for, for a change for, for me personally and uh, for our family. I, I have two daughters, one four and one seven. Uh, my seven-year-old will be a first grader at Wildwood Elementary this year. Um, and we're excited to be part of a community like Matamidi. Um, I'm excited to, to serve our families and our student athletes there at Matamidi High School. And it really was a great fit for, for me professionally and also for our family moving forward. So we spoke a little bit about um, what your favorite career, what excuse me, your favorite career memory as a player was. Take us through a little bit more time in your time in Minnesota State Mankato and how you got through uh, playing hockey professionally. Yeah, as well. um, you know, I played. You know, I also mentioned one of my biggest regrets wasn't playing more sports in high school. And I look back at it, and I, uh, I, I, my one of my biggest regrets is not playing football in high school. Um, and I looked at that, you know, as our student athletes, I think one of the, the biggest ways they can raise their ceiling athletically is making sure that they're playing more than just one sport. It just exposes them to so much more. And I think that's something looking back on my athletic career, I really would have benefited from. I was fortunate my, my senior year in high school, I, I played a, uh, junior A hockey with the old Twin Cities Vulcans before and after the, the high school season. Had a great experience there. And then um, went down to Minnesota State Mankato. Had four years there, four great years, um, long lasting friendships, um, and enjoyed my time there. Met my wife down at Mankato. Um, from there, I played one year in the East Coast Hockey League, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with hockey, uh, it's like the uh, the equivalent to double-A baseball. So you're, you're eating lots of uh, pizza and Subway on long bus rides and uh, traveling the country. So uh, my, my first stint there was in Charleston, South Carolina, still my favorite city to this day. Uh, was thankful to have the time there. Um, and I still remember January 5th, 2005, I got called into the coach's uh, general manager's office and said, you know, I sat you down and said, Aaron, uh, 
we've, we've made a deal and we're sending you to Peoria, Illinois, which it couldn't have been more different than Charleston. Um, I spent some time there in Peoria uh, and then ended up getting traded again to, and finished off that season in San Diego. So for me as a 23 year old uh, with aspirations, you know, dreams of playing in the NHL, uh, you're playing double A hockey and you get uh, traded twice and experience three cities, you read the, the writing on the wall. And I knew I wanted to connect with kids and get back into education. Um, and instead of going back for another season, I thought, let's get my career started in education. Um, and actually went back. I, I finished my four years at Mankato with a degree in social studies without the teaching license. Uh, it was just a way for me to get out of college with that degree in hand. Um, and I went back and got my teaching license through the College of St. Scholastica. And 18 months later, I was um, coaching JV hockey at Forest Lake and, and subbing in the district. And um, two years after I was done playing hockey, I was teaching US history. And um, the timing worked out. I, I ended up being the, the head varsity coach at, at Forest Lake, spent seven great years with that program, building great relationships with kids, had um, some phenomenal teams. Um, and really enjoyed my time there. So as you talk about that transition from being a player at a very high level to coming back and being a coach at the high school level, talk about that transition from being in the person who makes the impact on the ice to the person who's coaching those players to yeah. make that impact themselves. You know, it, and I took a, uh, I had just a wide range of experiences as a player where there were teams where I, um, I was relied upon to, 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 to eat up more minutes, for lack of a better word. Um, and then there were teams where I struggled to earn my ice time, and um, I, I filled more of a role. And that helped me as a coach, because I could connect with all of those kids, uh, with every role of the team, and, and really kind of getting back to the purpose of why we're doing it. Um, I played hockey because I enjoyed the competition. I uh, valued my time with my friends, and I had fun. And uh, if you're not getting those things, maybe you should reevaluate while you're playing. But really making sure that our kids are getting the, those same experiences is what brought me back to coaching and ultimately to be an activities director. So now that you are the activities director and you've been at Forest Lake before, what's the first thing that you really look at helping to build the strength of here in Matamida? Yeah, it, we have a great foundation at Matamida and it's one of the reasons I'm so excited to be there. And, and really is helping our student athletes, our coaches and our families get the best out of that high school experience. And that is those things that go beyond the playing field, the court or the ice. And how can we instill character development in our student athletes that they're gonna take to a college campus down the road or into their careers after college and really equipping them with those, um, those soft skills, those intangibles, learning the value of work ethic, um, teamwork, those things, how, how to win gracefully and how to, to lose gracefully, but take those lessons, learn from them and be better next time, whether it's a winning experience or losing experience, we want to be better go going forward. And those are some of the great things we get from high school athletics. As you've seen in the classroom, as a teacher and as an activities director as well, what's your message to students concerning balancing athletics and activities and student workload as well? Yeah, that's a great question. The reality is, is it's different from when I was in high school 20 years ago. The pressure on ACT scores, on AP classes, um, kids are being spread thinner than they ever have before. And then you throw in the social media aspect, the cell phones. We, it's important that kids know that they can write their own stories. Think about your family and your goals, your aspirations, and put priorities on that, and learning how to advocate for yourself. So you're talking to your AP chem teacher and including what your practice schedule is that week and what your concert schedule might be for the month. Um, we have incredibly well-rounded kids in our schools, and we just, as adults, making sure that we're empowering them to take care of themselves. And they're, they're gonna leave Montemedi High School that much better for it, and they're gonna be successful when they step on a college campus and ready to get in the workforce after college. 
We want to thank Matamidi Activities Director Aaron Forsyth for joining us for this interview here today. Thank you. Awesome. This is your home for Matamidi Athletics on SCC Sports. So quickly out to near midfield, played there by Say Blue. Over there was Jordan Betterman. His uh, sister Sam is the captain for the girls soccer team, also a very good player on the basketball team that made it to state last year, came in fourth. Here's a good setup for New Ray Kadir, but into the arms of Ragnus, and he will hang on. You would imagine we'll see a few more substitutions here in the second half. Good lead pass for Maypaw Wa, but uh, White Bear's defense gets back in a hurry. Collision there at midfield. It's going to be free kick for the Bears. That's Paul Morris doing a nice job defensively. Free kick, White Bear Lake. A little while we'll see uh, the upcoming broadcasts on SEC Sports. It's, uh, for my grouping with CTV and 6 to 3 Productions, again, we have Roseville North St. Paul volleyball on the 12th and Roseville Stillwater football on the 14th. Very much looking forward to that one. Good work there by the Bear defense, but it's stolen away by Ali. Coming in against Morris. And there in front, and it's finally knocked away by Kadir. Betterman over there for Roseville. It will be a Bear uh, throw-in, excuse me. Booted well by Rodgers to get it out to near midfield. The Bears take it back, however. That was Vargas, now high in the air. Chasing after it is Maypaw Wa. Head it up. And that shot will go well over the crossbar. The uh, U.S. men's soccer team and a friendly had a good contest with Brazil, one of the best teams in the world. Uh, only losing 2 nothing. The U.S. women's team, the best in the world. So they won the World Cup back in 2016. That was up in Canada. They've had some friendly matches as well. Long kick there by Grant Miller. Tried to spring uh, Gavin Rogers, but uh, Radia will take it back for Roseville. Good pressure put on by Carter Ellers, and Roseville quickly back the other way. Good lead there for Victor Vang, out of bounds, fair throw in. 
White Bears uh, head coach Carl Gendy, assistants are Jake Foley, Mike Knudsen, and Stefan Gendy. Again, uh, Apapados, Papagapados, better known as AP, head coach for Roseville, John Luke Kamen is the assistant. He has the Bears come down. Good centering kick, and that was broken up by Betterman. Otherwise, uh, maybe White Bear's best chance to break the shutout. Quickly after it, Ali for the Raiders. He does a nice job to keep it in along the far sideline. Good hustle the other way by Paul Morris. He's done a great job tonight, but it will be a corner kick for Roseville. Five minutes gone here in the second half. And the uh, girls game will be up next. Roseville three, one and two. They uh, beat the Tartan Titans eight nothing on Saturday, which was a bit surprising. One and zero in the conference. And of course, the Bears five and two. Also one and zero in the Suburban East. Their losses were to Marzetta, who's outstanding, and Montemita, of course, is very good in Class A. Quickly down the other way, shot by the goalie, and just wide of the far post. Oh my. Great opportunity there, I think it was Gavin Rogers. Goal kick, rolls up. And here we go. That is Gavin Rogers, as he was able to uh, sneak by Betterman. And good job by Ragnus to cut off the angle as that one just missed. Is going to regroup near midfield. something as uh, Mounds View's team last year won 10 in a row. It was one of the better teams in the state for most of the season. They have four players uh, playing college ball. Ooh, just overrunning that a little bit was Rogers. And Rose will send that out. And uh, I believe one girl at uh, Boston University, it's offsides on Roseville, one at Northern Iowa. Free kick, White Bear Lake. One at Mankato, I can't remember the fourth one offhand, but from one team, that's pretty impressive. Great footwork there by Vargas. Now along the far side. We have to also thank uh, SEC for the monitor. Usually I'm used to the uh, Really small boxy one that's uh, got about half the picture that this one does. This is a very nice treat for me. Good job keeping it in along the near side by uh, Roseville's Notostat. Back into the White Bear end. Again, as with pretty much every field in the Metro, this one uh, lined up for soccer, football, and lacrosse. Yeah, it, it looks beautiful. I, I uh, was mentioning to uh, Kirk Purcell the last time I was here was when it was the old rickety wooden press box. This is uh, quite a bit nicer. And uh, the turf was put in either two or three years ago. Even Stillwater, who had a grass field for uh, infinity, uh, decided, I believe, two years ago to put in turf. I don't know what the... Uh, Pony that goes on the field thinks of that. Good centering kick there again by Nure Kadir. And over there is Spencer Millard. Right now this is a beautiful setup here. Roseville has a similar one, unfortunately not quite as nice of a press box. 
Larry Junkemeyer, also a friend of mine, mostly through softball. He's been doing the football statistics forever for the Bears. That'll be a free kick for Roseville. Uh, for a while, Roseville and White Bear were trading off uh, Suburban East Conference titles for girls basketball. Nice steal again by New Ray Kadir. He's had an excellent game, although it doesn't show on the scoreboard. And a smart play there by Radia to uh, protect the ball and let it go out of bounds. A couple substitutions here. Looks like Max Lakes is going to come back in for the Bears. And Nehemiah Waldemarium will get a break as uh, Tristan Tao back in. Nice header there as Roseville regains control. Along the far sideline, picking that one up again is uh, Victor Vang. Past the 10 minute mark here of the second half. Hustling after it for Roseville was uh, Jordan Betterman. He's seen a lot of work here in the second half. It will be a White Bear throw in. That is Carter Ellers again, the co-captain. Well, I'm not sure where the ball boys ran off to, but uh, that one out of bounds and another Bear throw in. This one high in the air, and we will have a corner kick for the Bears. So a good opportunity here for White Bear to get on the board. And again, this will be New Ray Kadir. Low on the turf, and oh boy, this goes by everybody and right in front of the net. Saying thank you very much is Connor Ellers as he puts White Bear on the board. It wasn't really a set piece, but uh, they'll certainly take it. Was that Ellers 20? Yeah. Well, that was low on the turf and uh, skipped by four or five players. And Ellers uh, goes, thank you very much, and uh, drilled it by Rockness. He had no chance at all. There's goal, scored by number 20, Porter Ellers. Ellers scoring in the 50. So it is 4 1 now. And Roseville with uh, four different goal scorers and Ellers on the board here for the Bears. Here comes White Bear quickly down again. Along the far side, there's Ellers looking for back-to-back uh, -back tallies. Instead, this is lofted high in the air, headed down back on the turf. Played well there by the Bears, number 21, and also for Roseville, uh, Pedo. Great footwork there again by Spencer Millard. Very high in the air. The uh, wind has died down a bit. Quickly down for Roseville, that's Ali. Tristan Tao and Pedo also uh, the three forwards right now for Roseville. Uh, did not start the game. So the Raiders trying to get as many uh, players in as possible. I still do have a couple injuries. Again, uh, sophomore goalie Louis Ramos. I think it's more just precautionary, but they'll probably take a breather for a few games. And with Roseville's upcoming schedule, they certainly could use him. That shot curls back uh, towards the middle. That was interesting. 
Stolen away, nice play by Victor Vang. Notice Dad with it. Now back to midfield again for the Raiders. Trying to swipe that one away was Kadir. Back to Ragnus. Well, you don't want to get too cute there as uh, Gavin Rogers was applying pressure. <laughs> Throw in coming for the Bears. And we have a substitution as Dan Vargas will get a breather. This is uh, Micah Anderson. He saw some action in the first half. Chance along the goal line, and it will be goal a kick, goal Roseville. kick here for Roseville. 15 minutes gone in the uh, second half. Kirk, you put one up for the Bears. There we go. Well, usually they have a scoreboard operator and a public address announcer. <laughs> I was joking with uh, my friend Kirk Purcell. Normally they have a scoreboard operator and a public address announcer, but Captain Kirk is uh, doing both of those, which of course he can handle. Also the voice at uh, Aldrich Arena. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to check out the greatest to be the the ice sand in the land right skating here capital of the world. Stadium. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you we have ran out of the fried alligator on a stick. I do apologize. Back in for Roseville. <laughs> His, uh, excuse me, Chris Martell in for the first time. Well, hopefully that wasn't left over from the state fair. We're going to have a throw in for Roseville. This will be Betterman. Again, the uh, Roseville girls basketball team. Uh, White Bears should be very strong as well, but Roseville came in fourth in the state tournament last year, only graduated one player, Sarah Vihel. So this year could be even better. Nice move there by Tristan Tao. And has his pocket picked. Nicely done by Grant Miller. Goal kick, and so Beckler certainly doesn't have to complain about playing time. Well, have a goal kick here. Quickly coming in, nice save by Beckler. As on a breakaway was P. Doe, and that will just go off the football crossbar. I miss the old days when uh, they had the dual purpose goals. They uh, had uh, space in between the soccer crossbar and the football one, and they just put like, these metal X's in between. I'm guessing part of the reason they don't have that now is uh, lacrosse related. This will be a throw in again for the Bears and we'll take another look at it here. Here comes P. Doe and a nice diving stop using his uh, big frame to slow that one down. The Bears with nine seniors on this year's squad. And Roseville with 10. Nice job by Ragnus. As we're almost at the midway point here of the second half. And White Bear wanted a foul, they didn't get it. So now back the other way is Tao. Lead kick. Here comes Maypaw. 
offsides back about 15 yards before that. Free kick with Berlin. And uh, the Bears were the number one seed last year for the girls section 4AA. And unfortunately were knocked out by Moundsview in a shootout. Two to one. <coughs> Pedo will get a breather as Matthew Toe will check in. Headed down to the turf. Nice work there by Doe again. Also, there's a young lady for the Bears uh, soccer team, who I think her father was a friend of mine from Hamlin, uh, Marin so Showburl. Jeff also had a son who was an excellent baseball player at White Bear. Unfortunately for the Bears, they didn't have enough uh, kids to have a Legion team this year for the first time since uh, I can remember. Uh, a longtime Legion coach is a good friend of mine, Joe Janitsky. Spends uh, most of the year in Arizona, but it would always come back up for the Legion season. Uh, North St. Paul, which had uh, two teams, they only had one this year. Tri-City Red won their second state title in a row as they beat Wyzetta for the Legion state title. And then Rosetown, which is the Roseville kids, the Legion team Made it to state and came in third place. So it was a great year uh, all in all for the Metro teams in American Legion baseball. Minnesota has uh, more teams than any uh, other state in the nation. Back to Rognes as uh, 18 and a half left in regulation. Nice work there again by Spencer Millard. We had a few friends that played on those uh, Undefeated White Bear Championship teams, Jim Svenkison, Dan Perrin, Larry Avedon. <coughs> Jamie Avedon is a good friend of mine. Graduated in 1990, he was a third round pick by the Minnesota Twins, made it up to AAA before, unfortunately, injuries uh, derailed his career. And he's doing a lot of uh, baseball training in the lake here in the local area. So was uh, heavily involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Nice lead play there by Chris Martell. Field picked up there again by Martell. And it was 4 0 at halftime. Goals by Roseville's Abdallah, Noah Waldemarium, Radia, and Wynn. Radia's was on a penalty kick. And a nice stop right at the goal line there by Beckler to keep uh, the Roseville lead at three. Again, all those goals were uh, combined less than four minutes apart. And White Bear getting on the scoreboard at the 11.30 mark off the corner kick as Ellers with a beautiful one-timer right in front of the net. If it could have gone through the netting, I think it would have. Well out of play. James Cave, the uh, Roseville coach, graduated from uh, Roseville, oh boy, yeah, great defensive play there at the last second uh, by the White Bear defense. Whew. Otherwise, uh, Matthew Toe would have had his first goal on the season.
But again, the uh, next game should be a treat as uh, the girls for the Bears will be uh, the white bear pretty heavily favored. The number nice five in the state, today, number two on the year. In the last two meetings uh, between the Lady Bears and the Raiders, Roseville has not scored. They've lost by a combined 9 nothing. Trying to lead pass there for Toe. Uh, the Bear defense catches up with him. Collision there between the two fives. Abdallah for Roseville, Morris for White Bear. Midfield. Now yeah, coming back down is Grant Miller. Shot put on, that'll go well wide by Kadir. Substitutions for the Bears coming up. Go kick rolls up. Got a whistle and a stoppage. And uh, the Bears did have a couple substitutes. Go kick rolls up. Kirk, I think they want you to uh, reset the clock. I, th I thought he said 1508. Was it 1508? 1508. Okay. He's got it. Good lead pass there as uh, intercepted again by the Bear defense. And we're going to have a foul on Roseville. The defensive work there by Max Lakes. Free kick, White Bear Lake. Exactly sure why they put more time back on the clock, but that was the uh, official's discretion. I guess, again, he's keeping uh, the official time on the field. A friend of mine who lives not too far from here, Gino Hansen. He's a longtime softball and soccer official, and basketball too. Kind of a jack of all trades. The CEO of the North American branch of uh, Gino's Carpeting Company. Good chance here in the middle for Roseville. Nice job coming back at the last minute by Coyne to knock it away from Doe. Go Nancy, a great chance to make it 5-1. High and long and out to midfield. Nice job by Betterman. Now here come the Bears. That's uh, Carter Ellers again. Good centering play up for Vlogmas. <laughs> Thomas Green, so it'll be Green from Ellers. To make it 4 2. Uh, 26 34. Okay, there you see Ellers coming along the far side and just getting by Rodgers and a great tip there by Brady. 
So that cuts the lead in half at 42. Seventh minute of play for the Bears. There we go. See now, uh, with Roseville, we've been able to uh, link our graphics straight to the uh, official score clock. Oh, great chance there for Micah Anderson. This does look like a bit of an older scoreboard, so that might not be a possibility here. But either way, uh, this has been a real treat so far here in the first uh, contest. Looking forward to the second one. That'll start about 20 minutes after this one's done. Stolen away by Roseville. Good lead pass there goes just too far intended for Matthew Toe. by the Roseville bench. The ball's fought for, and Roseville will take it back over. 12 minutes left in regulation, but it's now 4-2. Roseville with all four goals in the first half, and the Bears with a couple here in the second. Now the bounds off of the Bears, and a Roseville throw in coming up. Throw in, played there by Abdallah. He scored the first goal of the game back uh, at the 1922 mark. Taken in there by Beckler. Here come the Bears. That's Vargas once more. And Roosevelt will take it back over. Nice play there by Millard to keep it in for White Bear. After it there again is Micah Anderson, right near the corner flag. I'm a little surprised White Bear isn't throwing more uh, players into the attack. Good work there again by Toe. And it'll be a Bear throw in. Ten and a half left in regulation. Sure, that's uh, Hannah Brandt's uh, sister. Got it. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, excellent stories about them and during the Winter Olympics. And uh, Hannah's going to play for the Whitecaps. That will go out of play. At halftime, we'll have an interview with Marissa Brandt. Uh, she played with the Korean team in the Olympic Games in South Korea. Her sister, of course, is Hannah Brandt. She uh, came up through the White Bear system before uh, going to Hill Murray, where she was all universe and then one of the leading goal scorers for the Golden Gophers uh, before now playing with the Olympic team. and. She'll also be playing with the Minnesota Whitecaps, which I'm very much looking forward to. This goes high in the air, deep into the bear zone. Good play there by Ali. Nice defensive work by Nick O'Brien, the freshman again. And it looks like we'll have a Roseville throw in. The uh, coaches for the Whitecaps, one is Jack Brote, who's been around women's hockey forever. His wife, Marlene, was a great player in her own right. 
course, uh, his son, Vic, is a very good player at St. Cloud State, longtime girls hockey coach at Roseville. And uh, three daughters, Carrie, Winnie, and Chelsea, graduated with Carrie back in 1990. She was the first uh, women's head coach at St. Cloud State. She also coached the North St. Paul Tartan co-op girls team. And of course, Winnie was the first Miss Hockey Minnesota back in 95. She'll be on the team and her younger sister, Chelsea. They both were great players for the Gophers. Chelsea's uh, married to the current girls hockey coach for Roseville, Craig Rosenthal. And the assistant coach is gonna be Rhonda Curtin, who also had uh, great success with the Gophers. Originally, I'd heard it was gonna be Rob Stauber, but uh, something fell through. And they're gonna play their home games at the uh, beautiful brand new practice rink for the Wild. That's uh, in downtown St. Paul on top of the old Macy's. Their opener is October 6th. They play at four and then the Wild play at seven. So you can see both games if you like. And the Bears have a future go for Sydney Sheeran, who has had an excellent career for the White Bear girls hockey team and looking forward to uh, her being in the maroon and gold. If you have not been to Ritter Arena, I highly suggest it. It's a beautiful smaller arena, great for women's hockey, great for uh, section playoffs. Just a beautiful setup on the uh, U of M campus. Back out to midfield, headed down by Nehemiah Waldemarium. Uh, we're doing a Roseville game. I'd say it's right at the 6-2-3 mark of the second half. That's Roseville School District number. That is, ooh, kicked out of harm's way, but then back. Oh, what a shot by Tristan Tao. And that just hooked wide. It was tough to see if Beckler got a piece of it. I think he did. But uh, what a good chance for Roseville to uh, put the game on ice. White Bear also has one of the better goalies in the Metro. Now, so far in the season, L.A. Janicki uh, has a 1.41 goals against average save percentage right around 86, which is outstanding. Again, right here in the middle, and here you'll see the kick, and I don't think Beckler got it, but it just went off the far post anyway. Yeah, a little too much English on it. As uh, Kadir was knocked unceremoniously to the turf. All right. Looks as though Kadir and Radia. I don't know if they got yellow cards or what the case will be. <coughs> but uh, either way, Joe Wallach don't forget, ladies, coming, coming off the coming field. Up after the completion of this match will be the estrogen version, the Raiders, the Bears, coming up. Uh, leave it to Kirk. From Kirk for a long time, uh, mostly through the Village Inn over there off of uh, 61 and County Road E. It used to be a much smaller place. Still at the softball field. That was uh, what I was most interested in. My dad and I have run uh, numerous teams there. Kind of a white bear institution. So the Bears with a throw in.
Well, both Padilla and Kadir are back on the field. So, the Bears with another throw in as we near the four minute mark here of regulation. The uh, World Cup this uh, past summer was sure fun to watch, even though it was awfully hot in Russia. I have no idea what things are gonna be like when they have it in uh, Qatar in four years. That's gonna be blazing hot. Doesn't seem to be like the best idea in the world to me, but uh, something tells me FIFA might have gotten some good payments on that. But I digress. Nice job there by Nehemiah Waldemarium. Now taking it there is Maypa Wa, who's had a great game as usual. Now along the goal line, centering kick, and that's out of play. Hey, Stacy. 3.15 left to go in regulation. A lot of the uh, girls for Roseville are also on the basketball Rodriguez. team. As Roseville with a quick send in on the corner kick. We'll take another look at it here. There is Radia getting by the defender. Goal kick by and again, a nice save by Beckler. Great job uh, in the truck, as they have done so all evening. You are most welcome. Midfield, Roseville takes it back over with just over two minutes left. Actually, both goalies for the Bears have uh, played well this year. Both uh, Janicki, who is a junior, and Lehner, who is a sophomore. Again, this was uh, from the Northeast Journal on the SEC government channel. Joe Cullen talked to uh, Marissa Brandt. Goal we'll have that right. very shortly at the end of this uh, contest. And there's a Kirk Horstead sighting. Kirk's son, Jesper, who had a phenomenal athletic career at Roseville, now is at Princeton in the Ivy League. He is their best wide receiver. He's on the preseason All-America team and also is one of their best baseball players. That will go out of bounds for a Roseville throw-in. So the Raiders will even up their record at three and three on the season, two and oh in the Suburban East. But again, that could be short-lived with a game at number one in the state and undefeated Stillwater on Thursday. White Bear will go to two, two, and one in the season, even in the Suburban East. They have a very winnable game against uh, Forest Lake in the way northern metro on Thursday, and then will host an excellent Duluth East Greyhounds team, number three in the state, in a real tough one on Saturday. Roseville, likewise, will have a tough one against the Minnetonka Skippers. 
So Roseville scores four in the first half. White Bear answers with two in the second, but cannot get any closer. Four to Roseville. As uh, that'll do it for our boys soccer game here this evening. We'll have the girls shortly. Uh, my thanks to a great camera and technical crew. And now.